Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. If you are not 100% permanent in total, watch out because there are moving pieces within the VA with proposed rules that should be going into effect anytime between really the this summer and over the course of the next year or so. Uh, and that those things could actually become roadblocks for you or could potentially help you as well. I wanted to dive into that a little bit and kind of give you, I don't know, a loose warning and some awareness so you are prepared. So please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I truly appreciate it. Uh, it goes a long way hitting that thumbs up and letting the video run. If you want to support the channel in other ways, you can become a member. You can do that by going to the homepage. You'll see the highlighted members. Hit the join button there. Also, if you're not aware, I do have a co-hosted channel that is with Clay from the Sib Div. And uh, we do some dialogue stuff there we, we, or, where we can go back and forth. And uh, it's a, a little more deep dive into some subjects for you. So please check that out at Veterans Daily. All right, let's jump into this. So if you're not 100% permanent in total, the first thing that I want to tell you is in some cases, not all, we, we kind of have this idea that 100%, especially permanent and total, is the absolute worst off that you can be. And maybe I don't quite fit in that bucket. Sometimes that might be true. Sometimes it's not. But the reality is, is that 100% permanent and total is not, 100% permanent and total is not the worst situation person, okay? There's a whole other rating schedule called special monthly compensation, and that is reserved for those with more severe situations, and that is a much higher monthly payout. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there because I don't want people to go, well, I don't rate 100% because I'm not that bad off, is what we tell ourselves. So the reality is, is that there are some ratings out there that are substantial, these are, you know, you're going to hear high value claims out there uh, in this world. Uh, and there are some decent sized percentages that you can receive for conditions that you might not think would warrant that in today's world. Now, keep in mind, this is kind of a warning video of the changes to come. So some of these things will change. So if you don't already have them in place, you could be missing out on tremendous opportunities. But again, the big point here, first and foremost, is you could potentially be rated at 100% if you have the conditions needed to get you there, right? So in other words, don't leave anything on the table. Here are a couple quick examples that I like to use. Currently, here we are in March of 2024, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, bad heartburn, can be rated as high as 60%. Migraines can be rated as high as 50%. You have uh, sleep apnea with a CPAP. If you have a CPAP uh, uh, for your sleep apnea, you could be rated 50%. Uh, you have, in some cases, tinnitus, although only 10%, could warrant secondary conditions uh, if you can get the right documentation for them with regard to maybe migraines or maybe you have some uh, uh, anxiety or depression due to your severe tinnitus that then is bumping that number up substantially as well. Now, now that you know that, look, I, this isn't just about injuries. This is not just about I twisted my knee, I hurt my back, my neck is jacked up. It's, it's other things as well, right? Now, of course, that bad back could turn into uh, some arthritis in there and that could warrant another higher rating. So, all that to say is that there could potentially be a path to 100%. Now, the warning here is this. There are proposed changes that are negative in some cases, right? So some of them are just truly negative, right? If, if the change goes through as, a, as, uh, as proposed, right? So that would be tinnitus. Elimination of tinnitus. The 10% itself for tinnitus might not be that big of a deal in the big picture for your, for your claims and for your total percentage, but the ability to hang secondary conditions off of that tinnitus claim might be a problem. Another issue that we could be running into with regard to the proposed changes is the elimination, essentially, of that 50% if you are prescribed a CPAP 
for sleep apnea. The basics uh, here are they are proposing that if your sleep apnea is being treated well and you are um, uh, successfully being treated, then they're going to essentially rate you at a 0%. So it's going to be hard to really get any substantial rating off of sleep apnea if that proposed change goes through. So those right there are the first two real big negative changes. Now the third potential potential negative change that you could run into is GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. This could potentially be a negative. They're changing the requirements for your ratings. Now, you might rate currently a 30 or a 60% based on the criteria that's currently listed under hiatal hernia. However, they're changing the criteria if it goes through to esophage uh, esophageal stricter. And the criteria is different. If, if you don't meet the criteria, you might warrant a lower rating if the changes go into effect. Now, on the flip side, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, bad heartburn, rated as, esoph as esophageal stricter, could actually be a positive because they're pushing the maximum rating from 60 to 80%. So this is going to be my transition into some of the positive changes that you could be looking forward to. But you need to be aware because nobody is going to file the claim for you. Here's the, here's the, the situation. If any of the negative aspects are, are going to be something that you're facing, then you need to file your claim for those conditions if you have not already filed for them. The sooner the better. So get that information into the VA. If you have tinnitus, if you have GERD that's in a good rating situation, file. I mean, if no matter what, file for GERD. If you have sleep apnea and you're and you have a CPAP, you need to be filing for that, uh, utilizing today's rating schedule because you're going to be better off. Now, if any of these proposed changes go through on the positive side, you want to also keep an eye open for those because when they do go into effect you're gonna to need to jump on it and file for claims if it's gonna push you higher. For example, if you had GERD rated at 30%, but then with the esophageal stricter uh, guidelines, <clears throat> if you warrant a higher rating, you would wanna file an increase on that utilizing the new schedule of ratings. Now, another positive change, in my opinion, that's coming is uh, uh, the potential, right? Because it's a proposed change, and that is the adding of many locations for uh, specifically Agent Orange uh, throughout the U.S. where Agent Orange and other herbicides were used, tested, uh, or stored. And if that goes into effect and you served in one of those locations, well now all of a sudden the entire presumptive list opens up for you. This is a really, really big deal. Now I have one more positive for you, but I wanted to hammer home on this on this uh, opening of the Agent Orange locations throughout the U.S., uh, India, Canada, uh, where it's used, stored, and uh, tested. The whole list of presumptives, this includes things like uh, uh, high blood pressure, right? Um, a whole host of cancers, I mean, diabetes, um, what else is there? There's uh, ischemic heart disease. So there's all kinds of presumptive conditions that come with Agent Orange. And, uh, and being in one of these locations during a specific time frame will absolutely open up that window. Now, the last one I wanna to talk to you about as far as a positive change is concerned that will help you get there uh, to that 100% if, uh, if, you're, if you're paying attention is you need to keep an eye on it for mental health changes. They're talking about eliminating the total uh, social and occupational uh, aspects of the 100% rating, which means that it will be easier to hit the 100% rating, in my opinion. The criteria that they're going to use is going to be completely revamped and really more, I think, more appropriate for, for today's world as far as mental health conditions are concerned. So uh, if you're at 70%, I would imagine that you would be able to move to 100% fairly easily on mental health alone if you're at 70% for mental health. 
if you have a lower rating, a 30 or a 50 for mental health, it might push you to the next level up, uh, which again is really important to get you closer to that 100% permanent and total. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you so much. I, I truly do. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.